Hello and welcome. I am Aniruddha here with you as always. As I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, I've been painting for a bit over two years now. And it was exactly a year ago that I set up my first palette of uh, 18 colors. Over the past one year, my choice in colors has obviously changed. Not by a lot, but by a fair bit. This is what my palette looks like today. In this video, I am going to do the same thing I did last year and I'm going to swatch out my current palette right here. I am going to start with my warm colors. First up is Lemon. PY3 by White Knights. It is a cool yellow, slightly opaque, and it was present in my palette throughout the year last year. Next up is my warm yellow, New Gamboge by Daniel Smith. PY97 and PY110, it's a two pigment mix. This color is new to my palette. I decided to use it over my previous uh, warm yellow because this one is way more transparent. Next up is uh, orange. Transparent Pyrol Orange PO71 by Rembrandt. Although this color is new to my palette, I can't say it is directly replacing a color which was previously there. Orange happens to be my favorite color, but it took me some time to figure out how to make best use of it in watercolor. Next up is my warm red. This one is new to my palette as well. I am using a Pyrrol red by uh, Shinhan PWC, pigment PR254. The pigment it is replacing was a scarlet, which I removed so as to make space for both this warm red and orange. Next is my cool red. No changes here. I have been using this uh, Quinn Violet Rose PV19 by White Knights over the past year and I will continue to use it in 2023. Now on to my earth colors. First up is a Burnt Sienna PBR7 by White Knights. Again, this is not a new color. I have used it throughout 2022. Next up is a slightly cooler brown. Van Dyke Brown. Again, pigment PBR7 by Mission Gold. This too is not a new pigment to me and I've been using it for a while now. Really useful pigment to have, especially when painting uh, wildlife. Next up is my Earth Yellow. I use a Ochre Light PY43 by White Knights. My complaint about this color is that it is quite weak. So you need to add a lot of it for any color mixes, which means that these tubes run out very fast and you need to buy, you need to buy them in bulk.
now on to my cooler colors first up is my warmer green this is a sap green it's a three pigment mix py 50 pg 36 and pbk 7 it's by white knights and it's not new to my palette i have been using it for a while the second green on my palette is not new either it is a viridian green although unlike most viridians it's a two pigment two pigment version by senelian it's comprised of pg18 and pg7 next up is a color which has been on my palette for the longest amount of time uh, it's cobalt azure blue pb36 by white knights slightly granulating muted cold blue next one is also a cold blue this one is new to my palette however it's a color called azure pb15 it's a type of thalo blue previously i was using a thalo blue green shade this one is somewhere in between a green shade and a red shade now on to my warm blue which is ultramarine light pb29 by mission gold most painters have some form of ultramarine on their palette i have opted for this one because it has just the right amount of granulation for my liking and has been on my palette for a very long time Next up is Payne's Grey by White Knights. Pigment PBK7, PB15 and PV23. I have enjoyed using some Payne's Grey, some form of Payne's Grey on my palette for a very long time. Although I've been using a White Knights Payne's Grey for more than a year, I think they've changed their recipe. <laughs> Next up is a cobalt turquoise PB28 by White Knights. This is a new color on my palette and has very quickly become a color which I really enjoy working with. It's just so bright and strong and you can just put it into a wet wash and it tends to push other pigment away. So a lot of special effects are possible. Next up is Lavender by White Knights. It's a three pigment mix. PB15, PB29, PW6. White Knights Lavender is particularly opaque. Really nice for uh, white objects in shadow. And also for adding in wet washes like the you know, cobalt turquoise. Next one is the second dark on my palette. I haven't been using this for a very long time. It is new to me. It's lamp black by White Knights EBK six. I was earlier using White Knights version of ivory black, which was a two pigment mix. It had black and some sort of red. In. So I switched to this because I wanted a. single pigment black and last 
एंड मे बी ऑल्सो द लीस्ट इज चाइनीज वाइट बाय कैमलिन आई डोंट क्वाइट नो द पिगमेंट नंबर आई डोंट यूज अ लॉट ऑफ दिस कलर एंड ओनली टाइम आई यूज इट इज टू एड ओपेसिटी टू अ डिफरेंट कलर इफ आई एम गो टू एड इट और पुट इट ऑन अ डार्क बैकग्राउंड that just about concludes my palette at the moment let's see what changes the next 12 months brings so our swatches are now dry we can take a closer look also compare them to the 2002 sheet so big changes are on the sides biggest one is that uh, i have replaced this dark for a turquoise the ochre even though is the same it seems a little different i'm not very sure whether the manufacturer has changed the color or i have managed to contaminate the ochre while i was swatching it i think it's the latter paints gray i know the manufacturer has changed the formula i can see a very subtle change and the last thing that i want to draw attention to is the chinese white i am absolutely certain that i want to replace this color i have been wanting to do that for a very long time but i am waiting for my tube to run out seeing the rest of the colors would you have any input as to what you would like to see or what would fit my palette well instead of this uh, chinese white thank you for joining me please remember to do all the youtube things like subscribe press the bell button i will see you in the next one